it's been weeks, supplies are getting low, I'm almost out of beer, ran out of beef jerky days ago, I'm almost getting to the point where I'm only going to be eating vegetables and that's terrible because I really like to eat meat. But I think after weeks of searching we found the giant Utah snail's den and it's somewhere in suburban Utah. So stay tuned and find out more. So I think we've tracked it down. There's definitely evidence of, of eating in here. It can't be far. It can't be far away. Oh no! Oh, she's looking at me like a scuggle! After weeks of searching, that is the first spotting, the first sight of the Utah giant snail. Au revoir, mon ami! <laughs> so what have I been doing to try and control the bugs and things that are just kind of getting a little bit out of hand in here? Um, well, I've been trying with some trapping methods. So to do that, I used um, newspaper, some cardboard, um, or even like an old like paper bag and you can just fold it up and actually this worked really well because some of my old seed packets that I left outside that got wet um, when I lifted that up there was tons of sour bugs and things actually in them so I was able to kind of just pick up a packet and get rid of it but the key to this is getting it wet you got to get it moist so that they think Oh, it's somewhere dark and damp and this is where I want to go. So folding up, you know, a bit of paper and wetting it will work great. And then just pop that within your bed. Um, I really like rolling up cardboard or newspaper. So you can just, you can secure it with a bit of tape or uh, um, elastic band or something like that but again you gotta you gotta wet it. it needs to be wet on the inside and you know the idea is that the bugs will crawl into this um you know because you've given it nice little areas for them to come in and hide and they they'll crawl into here um and hide out and then in the morning you just kind of pick this up and you know throw it out in the garbage to reduce that um that does does work um if it's slugs and snails, beer, beer traps always work really well. Mm. Um, I found that slugs and snails seem to have a favorite kind of beer, just like people. Um, this is an IPA. IPAs do pretty well for capturing um, slugs and also very malty beers. Um, I found certainly in my time in England that <laughs> When you used to put the really cheap, cheerful, you know, store brand value um, lager down that, that didn't really capture as many as what, you know, a really good pint did. Um, if you brew your own, you could use the trub that's left. Um, but if you put a larger quantity of beer in there, um, the game is that, you know, they crawl in and, well, basically fall in um, they can't get out and they they end up drowning in there um, margarine and butter tubs work well yogurt pots those kind of things that you can sink in in line with the soil so let's say here's your soil um, you want to be digging a hole planting it in so it runs flush and then mr. sluggy or mr. snail comes along and it's like ooh there's a party going on in here and they'll end up just going in and then drowning. Um, deeper pots work a lot better um, because obviously they're going to have a harder time to crawl out um, once they're in there and you do need to change them probably about every week or so to be able to um, you know keep them refreshing keep them going. Um, one problem I found here with that is that 
um, beer or anything that's kind of sweet um, attracts ants really bad um, and the last thing I want is lots of ants in my bed I don't want to build up a formic acid in there um, so that doesn't really work for me so when I find slugs and snails I tend to just pick them off and you know give them to the chickens but the chickens have other things um, on their agenda for eating and the snails tend to kind of just crawl away somewhere in the coop so um, I think eventually they, they get eaten. Um, I found lots of empty shells, um, but it, it's not really their first choice in eating. Um, it's good. Um, <clears throat> I have been using some of these earwig traps and um, there's a few things that you can use as bait in here. So you can use half teaspoon of vanilla, you can use fish oil, you can use castor oil, soy sauce or ripe fruit and you put some soapy water into the trap as well and what happens is um, soapy water is really good at basically killing um, bugs that breathe through their skin. So if you've got like um, wasps that are setting up shop in your home, you can just hose them down with some, you know, um, dish soap or washing up liquid in water and it will just kind of coat them and stop them breathing. Um, it's the same way that um, a lot of people use to take care of like killer beehives and things as well. Um, but for me, uh, I've actually been using um, some old cooking oil into these with um, some soy sauce this is what they look like and I put the cooking oil in here with a couple of drops of soy sauce I have a soy allergy so soy sauce is now useless in my house but I don't like to just throw something out so I'm kind of glad that now I can put a use to it so um, you can put you know the soapy water in here and a little bit of the fruit um, or vanilla or whatever you're using um, don't put beer in here because you're going to end up with a whole ant farm and the idea is you know the earwigs crawl in and then they they drown and can't crawl out again um i've had kind of intermittent success with these um some of them have worked really well some of them haven't i've tried putting them kind of under something that's very leafy so it's giving it some shade and that seems to have helped a little bit more but if i can kind of find like little um terracotta like roofing tiles um, so if you're in England you can get roofing tiles that kind of look like this and they're usually terracotta and they work really good for putting underneath you know like your bug traps and things because you're keeping it cool you're keeping it moist and it's kind of shaded as well so that works really well I'm trying to find something similar here in the US um, I've got lots of bricks but um, the bricks just seem to be, you know, bug hotels more than anything, um, which, you know, is great. You know, I, I really value having insects and things in the garden, um, but not ones that are munching on my plants. Um, so that's what I've, I've been trying. Um, and after probably the seventh or eighth time that I sowed my melon seeds and my cucumber seeds, I pretty much lost it and I ended up going out and buying um, this stuff. This is Sluggo Plus and it's Omri listed, so it's for organic gardening and it's a mixture of iron phosphate and spinosads and they work pretty well. And I won't lie, I was running around the garden cackling like the Wicked Witch of the West, shouting at die my pretties die, which probably made my husband incredibly nervous, let alone all the neighbors. Um, so <laughs> I've used this, I, I got, I mean, this is two and a half pounds. Um, that's 1.14 kilos to the rest of the world. Um, and I've used almost all of this um, throughout the garden. And I, I did apply a, um, rather healthy dose um we'll say across stuff and i've got to say like my veggies and everything are now able to recover i actually have um plants that are coming up my seedlings are finally growing so i'm really excited um about that but you know the one thing that i want to stress is you know i tried lots of other things beforehand um i was growing lots of sacrificial um crops as well um I grow growing like lots of nasturtiums, um, poached egg plant, those kind of things to um, help, you know, bring in beneficial insects and also kind of, you know, 
take the brunt of the damage, so to speak, from the pests. But unfortunately, um, the critters here knew that my veggies were the most delicious items on the menu and that's what they ate. Um, so, um, so far, um, we seem to be doing really well. For this kind of product, you don't want to be applying it more than three times in, in a month. Um, you've got to wash your veggies and things before um, you eat them, um, which is, you know, it's fine. Um, I've got to be more conscious that I need to wash the veggies because what I would do a lot of the times for some of these um, rather moth-eaten, well, not moth-eaten, earwig-eaten, um, you know, leaves and stuff, I would tend to just pick those off and give them to the chickens, but um, I need to make sure that I rinse them beforehand. And the chickens absolutely love these greens. So that's a lot of the reason why I'm growing them. Um, <laughs> but I need to make sure that I'm washing them because if you dig kind of down in the plants you'll see you'll get little bits that are stuck to to the plants and I, I genuinely feel if it hadn't been for me putting this stuff down um, I almost sort of been wasting money gardening because just every time I was growing something it was eaten so hey Sparky come here um, it's pet safe as well that was something that's very important to me sit your butt down come on sit down good lad um, you know, I, having two dogs that are very inquisitive and actually like to eat veggies. I think Sparky's getting his nose in now to <laughs> try out something. Um, you know, it was very important to have something that was pet safe um, and people safe as well. Um, as, a, as a final thought on using, um, you know, actual organic pesticides um, is to, you know, really use them as your, your last um, resorts and use them sparingly as well because you don't want to harm you know the beneficial insects and things that are trying to make a home um, within your garden so you can um, you might be able to see behind me there's there's lots of like you know the beneficial wasps and things flying through um, you know oh oh hello you brought a eel hmm? you brought a eel to play with Apparently now I'm done. <laughs> so if you want to find out more um, about gardening, um, <laughs> what are you doing? If you want to find out a bit more about how I'm growing um, my veggies and things, um, head on over to www.misfitgardening.com um, or drop a comment below, um, message me. Um, you know, I, I always try and write back to, to everybody. So until next time, have a great day gardening. <laughs> hey Sparky, hey, is it time to play? <laughs> Bye. Oh no! There he is! There he is! Oh crap! She's looking at me like a scuggle!